This is the inbound secret. My name is Bryce, and I'm your host for The Inbound Secret, where we're talking with top performers and health experts and sales badasses alike about their strategies to optimize their well-being and performance. Once again, this is The Inbound Secret, and, and let's get rocking and rolling. This is The Inbound. This is, this is, this is The Inbound. This is The Inbound. This is The Inbound Secret. Welcome back to the Inbound Secret, guys. As always, I am your host, Bryce Vance. We've got Alexander Slowecki with us today. He's going to be talking a little bit about a pretty unique program he developed called Mind Mentor. To give you a little bit of background on who this guy is, he's somebody that helps really signify and concrete your ability to pursue your own responsibilities, your own daily tasks, your own mission, your own vision, and he does it in a pretty unique way. So without further ado, Alex, give yourself a warm welcome, tell the people a little bit about you, and we're going to dive right on in. I want to hear a little bit about what my mentor is, and we were talking a little bit before the show I think what we went over would be super valuable to the, to the audience listening and watching it. Sure. So, um, yeah, I was kind of explaining before, you know, there's a big misconception of what a mentor is versus what a therapist is versus what a life coach is. And I'm sure that we can all agree that life coaches now are popping up all over the place. Um, so anyone and their grandmother could call themselves a life coach. And now that kind of creates an issue where people perceive life coaches as kind of being anyone who has something to say. And that's not true because that's not what a real life coach should be. You know, you're coaching someone just like you are a, a football coach. You want to bring them to wherever they want to get that school <clears throat> scores a goal, right? Or, or some type of <clears throat> goal that, that they want to achieve to make points and they give them strategies to get there the most effective way and then continue up their ranking and et cetera, et cetera. So a goal is more going, a, go, a life coach is more so going to help you complete a goal, take you from where you currently are and bring you to where you want to be. A therapist is someone who's going to help you process traumas and help you give, give coping skills so that you can handle the stresses of life and daily life uh, in a much more healthy way and, and kind of investigate what is really going on behind the scenes. <clears throat> they also help you a lot with validation as well so that you can feel things that you didn't, you didn't get to feel as a childhood or things that you're really not handling well uh, right now, currently in whatever situation you're at. Now, a mentor can be somebody who has gone through something that you've gone through before, um, or they could be someone who's professionally uh, up up ranks you and can tell you about how to get to where you want to get to a little bit faster how do you need to think uh to get to where you want to go it's it's more of a supplemental person in your life who i think typically is seen as like an older wiser person you know a parent an old friend an old boss um whatever but the concept of paying for a mentor is not really pushed or established because nobody ever again, like it's this misconception of what a mentor is. So I kind of created my mentor as a way to distinguish myself from a life coach. And also, obviously, I'm not a licensed therapist. So what I do is I kind of combine the life coaching theories and a little bit of psychology background to create a mind mentor accountability program, a scenario where I can help someone continue their momentum that they are, are building in therapy or help continue their momentum that they are building in a life coaching session outside of the sessions, because most people tend to stop their progress in a therapy session or they stop their progress in a life coaching session. And then once they get out of the session for an hour, they kind of fall apart. And that's where as a mind mentor, as a mentor in general, 
that is what helps people continue to go and continue to prog progress uh, how they want to. So you're you're really kind of digging in the trenches with with your clients rather than rather than just being like, well, here's what you need to do, go do the thing. Yeah. <clears throat> you're coming in and you're saying, well, here's the holistic view of what you've got going on. This is your your action plan that you got from X. This is where you want to be and this is where you are. Now, here's how we make sure you do that. And we'll work, work hand in hand or together day by day to make sure that you're doing the things, those little micro steps that eventually get you to where you want to go. Yeah, I'm glad that you said holistic. Because um, that's another problem that I see in, in today's mental health industry and, and the kind of the field in general is there are no real holistic approaches towards mental health unless you're going to some type of rehab facility or you know some type of clinic and that can be extremely problematic because somebody who goes to a therapist is going to go there and expect that all their problems are going to be solved after those one hour therapy sessions you know weekly or bi-weekly but that's not how real progress or your mental state or rewiring your brain kind of works you need those holistic uh, approaches and those other people who play those other roles in your life to keep you going and to keep to support and supplement whatever it is you're learning and working on in therapy. Um, so ideally, there should be, in my opinion, a mind mentor or sorry, I keep saying a mind mentor, but you should have some type of mentor, some type of life coach and some type of therapist, all working together for your for your health. And throw in a dietitian in there if you want to, and a personal trainer. Well, it, it, I'm glad you just threw in personal trainer because, like the parable, I guess if if it's the correct term, that comes to my mind is like, I've hired, and still to this day, I've got coaches and and, and I would necessarily say mentor, but coaches, friends, mindset, sales trainers, etc that I hire regularly to help me keep my game up so that I can be of a bigger impact and serve others at a higher level. But even for myself, like I've hired personal trainers, fitness coaches, and what most people have this idea of is you hire a personal trainer so they can show you how to work out. That's not why you hire a personal trainer. Yeah. You can pretty much get that from walking into a gym or stumble around for a few hours and you'll figure it out. You hire a personal trainer to help you keep form, to help you keep gains, to help keep the motivation. Because as somebody who's gone through the cycles of being a gym addict to kind of falling off for a little bit and getting back into it on a regular basis now, until you get over that about six month time frame <laughs> where you develop it as a pattern, where it becomes part of you, pretty much every time that you want to go to the gym, it's a struggle. Yeah. Not because you don't like it. I like the gym. I love working out. I feel great during it and after it. But it's that connection you make that you're like, fuck, I got to go do this thing. It's I'm going to be tired. I'm going to be sore. It's going to take time away from other things. Mm -hmm. And with and that's where like a personal trainer or coach comes in because they're like, nah, you said this is what you want. This is how you get there this is what you have to do every day. And they keep you on track for that. Yeah, exactly. It, it sounds like that's really kind of where my mentor and what you do comes into play for people who are looking to have a deeper connection within themselves to find out who they are, what their purpose is, why they're here, what they're meant for, escape past trauma, kind of, kind of level themselves up more so than anything else. Is, is that a, a good assessment there? So... For, for me uh, and my mentor, we, I am trying to create what I'm calling the mind analysis summary and action plan. And that's the bread and butter of what mind mentoring is all about. And it's really about bringing the client's awareness to their deepest authentic self, um, which is extremely like advanced introspection. Uh, you know, just a little statistic out there, 95% of people think that they are self-aware, um, but about 10 to 
are actually by criteria self-aware. So that means a lot, you know, what does that mean? It means a lot of us are walking around day to day doing things every day that we think we know why we're doing them. We think we know who we are. We think that, oh, we need to do this podcast or we need to do this job or we can't do this job or I can't have this future or I have this fear or I have this anger or I don't like this or I like this or whatever it is that you define yourself as and however your mindset is and however your personality is, whatever you identify as. Um, we have 95% of people basically thinking they're 100% aware of themselves. So what I really do and how I start this mind mentoring is I bring your awareness to a much more honest place, a much more realistically authentic version of yourself first through advanced introspection type techniques and questionnaires. And then I give my mind analysis, which is a 17 page long report, like literally analysis about everything that we go through and all of your mind. And then from that point on, we establish real vision, real goals, and then I start to keep you accountable. So it's at kind of like the first, it should be the first step before you go to therapy. It should be the first step before you go to a life coach, because the problem with that is when you go to a therapist and you think you know who you are, you think you know your emotions, it takes like 10 months just to start diving into where you really are in therapy. Um, or as a life coach, you're hiring someone to get, you know, get me to a hundred thousand dollars by the end of the year by becoming a life coach. Right. Um, but the life coach is just going to do that. They're just going to help you get to where you want to be without actually diving into why you want to get there. And, and if you really should be getting there in the first place. Um, so that's kind of where my mentor is mostly is it's more about self-awareness and kind of getting you to a beginning, a real blank slate so that you can go to a therapist with all these real newly found problems that you were not aware of. And you can go to a life coach to bring you to really where you should be going or where you actually want to be, not where you think you want to be. So, so let's, let's dive in a little bit on this because, because the audience, the people listening, the people watching, we want to help them, right? We want to drop some gold nuggets for them. We want them to take action. We want them to be able to serve people at a higher level and, and make more impact, right? Now, obviously there's levels to this, just like anything else, right? Things don't necessarily happen immediately. They happen over time. It's kind of a scale effect. But for the people listening, the 95% of people that, that may believe they're self-aware, but they're not, they've got some work to do. What are a couple things that you've seen that you've helped clients do that through your expertise, through your program, through everything that you've done, people could take action on themselves to start making positive change, to become more self-aware, to be able to, to be able to start that process for themselves. So what can they do in order to start facilitating deeper self-awareness and introspection without a mind mentor per se? Yeah, exactly. Um, it's, it's, that's a hard question because you don't know what you don't know, right? And you can't self-analyze yourself if you are already uh, trapped by your own belief systems and your own cognitive biases, which most people are. Um, so it's kind of difficult because there's a, there's a confirmation bias, it's called, where you're basically going to try and self-analyze yourself and confirm whatever belief you already had before. Um, so it is a little difficult. However, the most fundamental way, which most people are not going to like this, is meditation. And not, I'm not talking about a BuzzFeed meditation or some type of uh, relaxation meditation or even a guided meditation. This meditation is rooted by like Zazen masters, and it really has a lot more to do with sitting within your own subconscious and your own suffering and allowing lessons to manifest through almost physical central nervous system based like pain and, and discomfort. Um, so a lot of the answers that people seek are already within their mind. And the way to kind of access them is to just sit and do nothing and then wait until those answers kind of come. But we're in a very, <laughs> we're in a very uh, fast paced society today and we do not like discomfort and we don't have patience and we don't have time. So it's difficult to kind of sell the real effective, deeper meditation, uh, which is why 
those guided meditations seem to do so well. So let's say that, hold on, I have to sneeze for a second, I apologize. Oh. I'm okay, I think. I don't know. Maybe I'll sneeze randomly while talking. So everybody just just bear with me. <laughs> Let's say that somebody comes to you and, or even somebody just listening to this today, right? This is maybe their first introduction. Meditation. They hear meditation. They're like, I, I'm gonna do it. When most people hear meditation, they think of the guided stuff. They think of the YouTube or the BuzzFeed stuff. Maybe they even think of yoga or, or some Tantra stuff, right? Mm -hmm. How would one, is there a resource that you found? Is there some tips or tricks that, that you know that can, you can guide these people on? That they can, they can maybe give it an attempt, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I actually created my own custom meditation. Um, a little background on that. I, uh, I, I mean, I'm, I might as well be honest. Uh, so I, from the, the beginning, I started from like, I'm adopted from Columbia. Um, I've had experiences with some intergenerational trauma from my parents, emotionally immature parents and codependency was involved. Uh, I always felt very alone my whole life. Um, I myself was codependent, uh, pretty toxic. I, I would say borderline narcissistic within a lot of my relationships. Uh, and then over time, I became more and more depressed. Um, I lost, I, my ex-girlfriend and I broke up, which was a huge trigger for me. And I kind of went into the spiral of depression. Um, so at some point I experimented with uh, shrooms and I got to this place in my, con con my consciousness where I, I called it like the, the end of consciousness. And, I'm not going to explain that entire trip, but that kind of led me to my friend who meditated uh, with a Zazen master over at Rutgers University in, in New Jersey. And because what I told her, she was meditating for years and years and years. And what I had experienced within that shrooms type of uh, trip was almost exactly the same type of thing that you're supposed to experience in higher levels of Zazen meditation which is the Japanese form of meditation with, with Buddhism. So that got my interest to go to meditation. So I went over there and I started meditating. Um, and basically long story short, for five years, I, I meditated pretty consistently um, up until recently on and off. And the degree of, of transformation and insights and wisdom and crazy experiences that I have undergone was just life-changing. And I read all about meditation and, and how it affects the brain. And I actually read um, neuroscience. Uh, it's called, uh, what was it called? How Enlightenment Changes the Brain. And it was a bunch of studies on that neuroscientists studied how the brain actually starts to change, what happens when people reach those enlightenment states and how can you get into them faster, more effectively. And so I basically took the knowledge that I learned and I took my experiences that I went through and I created my own custom meditation that I do have written down. So in terms of a resource, I have my own specific meditation that has been proven by other people because I've given it to other people. And I've, I'm actually, I'm, I'm a meditation uh, on the side. I, I help people with meditation. That's just another service that I do. And it's been helping people specifically with dissociation um, who have gone through more complex PTSD and have actually had dissociative identity disorder, or dissociative tendencies where uh, they kind of split their personality, they black out and they start to act a little bit of a different way as a coping mechanism because they went through some type of trauma as a child or, or whatever. Um, and what I've been seeing is actually an integration between their like, their subconscious and their consciousness, which is just, it's amazing to watch and witness because through my meditation, you're almost you're going, you're shifting in and out of consciousness states. You're shifting into a subconscious state and you're bringing it back to your, your awareness. You're bringing an awareness to your subconscious and bringing it back and forth. And you consistently do that over time so that you can actually integrate your, your true self is, is, is the theory in, in very short amount of time. <laughs> 
So it's <laughs> there's a couple things I want to touch on there because because that was that was a powerful statement. But let's let's take this piece by piece for everybody. So so first and foremost, I want to applaud you for the transparency because transparency is a big thing for us. And <laughs> I myself just launched my first book. It's being published on KDB here over the next few few days or few hours, just depending on how long they take to update everything. And, and it's called How Prolific Mistakes Make Prolific Profits. And, and it goes through my story of <clears throat> hell. I've, I've made every mistake you can possibly make at some point. Drug issues, alcohol issues, legal issues, personal issues. I was toxic at one point. I was the old his, like historically accurate men don't feel feelings guy, right? And it's the most painful thing I've ever had to do but probably the most prolific thing that I've had to do, the most beneficial thing I've had to do was to look at myself at a completely vulnerable, holistic state to find out what is causing these, what, what, what makes me toxic, what my bad traits are, how can I fix them, where do they stem from, and actually start healing. Yeah, yeah. And, and it sucks. Like, full disclosure, it's not a pleasant experience. Yeah. It is the most profound beneficial experience I've had in my entire life though. It led me to who I am, it led me to my vision, it led me to my mission, it led me to my purpose on this life that I've got tattooed on my right arm. It led me to helping thousands of people. It led me to to here and it's going to lead me to to everywhere that I'm going to go and all the thousands of lives we're going to be able to change throughout that time. It's worth it. <clears throat> But it's, <laughs> but I want to take that to kind of another thing. You started this journey at a low point and psychedelics kind of introduced you to the concept more or less. And that's interesting to me because there's <laughs> the gentleman who invented LSD, for instance, the gentleman who invented acid was a, was a medical physician and a, a scientist. And he invented it originally as a psychotropic that could induce a bridge between the knowing and unknowing mind to solve medically distressed patients that were currently just being solved with a lobotomy. Mm. And <clears throat> granted, there's a lot more to that story. He's written books about it. There's publications, there's articles, there are medical journals about this guy, but it, it, it kind of stems to he was trying to find a way to solve a problem to something that nobody understood, something that was considered psychosis. And it led him to this journey where he made one of the most powerful psychotropic drugs in the history of mankind. And that kind of opened up, there's a Netflix documentary about this, how psychedelics have, and the medical community were at one point one and the same, and they've kind of split, they've kind of bridged into the new age hippie that started in the 60s and 70s and the medical community that just uses pharmaceuticals. Right. But it's an interesting conversation because whether you like it or not, whether you believe in it or not, whether you use drugs or not, and I am by no means endorsing drug use. Yeah, right. right. In, in any sense of the term, by no means. <laughs> but it's an interesting thought experiment to have where internationally it doesn't matter the time frame the era the generation the nationality the ethnicity all societies have introduced a higher belief in psychological psychoactive experiments the, the knowing mind and the unknowing mind the conscious and subconscious to some degree in tandem with psychotropics or psychedelics <laughs> ayahuasca for a lot of the spanish communities and the, the eastern communities lsd for a lot of the europeans mushrooms for a lot of the new age hippies and, and right. that kind of following and they kind of whether they're tandem or not they seem to follow the same pathway now what i didn't know is that high level meditation and that seemingly to be connected or disconnected, but there's a coincidence, experience of humanity 
whether you consider it a weakness, a curiosity, whatever it is, I didn't know the experiences were very similar. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I have experienced higher levels of like truth and existence far, far greater and more intense than I did with, with any shrooms trip through meditation. Um, so I agree with you. Drugs are drugs, you know, drugs can do many different things. Um, it, it doesn't, it's definitely not, it should never be relied on and it should never be used as a primary means of, of tapping into health in general at any, in any sense, in my opinion, it needs to be used if it has to be used as a supplemental method that should ideally be tapered off. Um, but, well, and, and I think it's important to note that, and you said it yourself, if it has to be used, it, it needs to be just like if you go get a prescription for, for anything, there yeah. needs to be a medical reason for it. it. It can't just be like, well, it's Tuesday. So <laughs> yeah. And that's the problem. That's, that's a huge problem. I mean, it's, we're joking about it, but you know, that's one of the biggest problems. I don't know about today anymore. I'm so disconnected with like younger kids. I sound old, but like, I don't know what they do anymore. I know back when I was younger, um, you know, however, like 10, 11, 12 years ago, or I guess 15, 20 now, I don't know. Um, you know, drugs and alcohol use was pretty extensive. And uh, now that COVID's around, like, I don't know what anyone's doing anymore, but I, I still think, think it, it's, I think yeah. it still is. It, okay. it, it's probably peaked. I have no idea. I, yeah. I, I tend to just focus on helping people making an impact. And quite honestly, I feel old saying this, but I've got no idea what kids are doing these days. Yeah. The, but, but I think there's, I think there's something to be said in that and, and take this with a grain of salt. Once again, I'm not endorsing drugs or, or misuse of anything, but like I did it right for, for a pretty extensive period of my life when I was younger. And, and thankfully I, I haven't in years and thankfully it's not something like I don't abuse substances. Do I drink every now and then? Yeah. Have I partied every now and then since since high school? Yeah, but it's not, I mean, I'm not going out like fucking Wolf of Wall Street in the movie, just popping quaaludes. Like that's not a thing, right? <laughs> but what got me out of, of my old self <laughs> was the mindset, was, was fixing me and was focusing on who I was, why I was here, what my purpose is. And, and there's a couple of things that come along with that. My, one of my biggest issues with society that I think leads to a lot of the issues that, that cultivate, right, is what I call socioeconomic complacency. And, and what that really means is we've cultivated a society of performance and that's fine. I'm a big believer in performance, but what we failed to do is keep the education standards and the qualification and cultivation and really continuity standards up. We're still using an education system that was designed to create factory workers, thinking that it's gonna create free, free thinking, entrepreneurial, self-sufficient people. We're treating people as if they're numbers more than anything else, where you have to live 40, you have to work 40 hours a week, work for 40 years to retire on a fourth or a third of your life in a job you hate, to pay bills you hate, to buy things to impress people you hate. And that's, that's one, not a long-term profitable system, yeah. but two, it cultivates an experience where people don't know why they're here. Yeah. People have this belief that now we're born to work and we're living to die, right? But the chances of you being here are one in a hundred trillion for you to even be born. And then if you're born in a free world, a, a country that has any level of freedom, it's another hundred to 200 trillion odds of that occurring with 7.7 .7 billion people on this planet. You cannot with a fraction of your mind truly believe that your purpose was to be born to work. Mm. You have a deeper, bigger purpose here to serve to some level, to somebody, to make an impact, to make a change, to make a footprint, to build a legacy. And socioeconomic programming 
the the societal changes, the generational brainwashing, for the lack of a better term, that this is what normal is and there's nothing you can do about it, has caused a degradation of the self that unless you yourself look for some higher purpose, look for something above going out and working at a job you hate to pay bills and buy shit you hate to impress people you hate, you're never going to find true happiness or joy or purpose because you've been beaten down by a system designed to keep you there, yeah. right? And it wasn't until I started looking at me, why am I here? What's the purpose I'm here? Mathematically, it doesn't make sense for me to exist if there was not a greater reason for it. And if everybody had that conversation with themselves and then started going through psychiatry or counseling, whether it's yourself or a professional, hiring out coaches, mentors, and being truly vulnerable, open, and honest to work towards progression, I don't think drugs would be a problem mm. because we're not looking for, we're not looking for that happiness, that source, that greater meaning artificially anymore. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a couple things that you said I just wanted to, to touch on was uh, it's not just society. Um, I mean, society is obviously huge and it creates a culture of, like you said, workers and just kind of blindfolded people. Um, but it's also intergenerational trauma from parenting. Uh, in fact, I think that's one of the biggest problems is, is parenting in general, uh, especially the older generations. They've, we're just now starting to talk about emotions in 2021. So you can ima imagine you know, how we've been grown up and how we've been developed as human beings, how we've been taught to think by our parents and then on top of our parents, our friends' parents and yada, 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 yad, and then society. Um, so not only is it that socioeconomic kind of brainwashing, but it stems from within your household. Everything that you believe and everything that you kind of achieve or want to achieve always stems from within the household and then goes outward. Um, so that it, it's, it's, it's definitely a problem of education in general. But the, uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you was... Um, you know, you're exactly right. You're kind of, you're almost describing my mind analysis summary and action plan without even knowing it. And I wanted to ask you, what was the catalyst for figuring out or diving into or investigating who you really were? I had a gun in my, I had a gun in my mouth at 3 a.m. on July 10th of 2017. Mm. It's quite the catalyst. <laughs> I had started my life over three times before that. I had, <laughs> I had great wins. I had great failures. I'd gone through a bunch of shit. I grew up the hard way. The first time I was shot at, I was 13 or 14 years old. I didn't, and there was no reason for that. I didn't grow up in a broken home. My parents were divorced, but they both loved me. I knew that. I didn't grow up in a bad neighborhood. I didn't grow up lacking anything. We weren't wealthy. We were quite poor, but it wasn't for the lack of trying. I never missed out on anything. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a circumstance that put me in that situation it was poor decision after decision after decision after decision because at some point in my life I wanted to rebel and I just kept on that road and I didn't care because I didn't know who I was I didn't know why I was, why I was here I was looking for something that I couldn't even put a name on let alone a figure really talk about and that led me down a path that that ultimately did lead to to now I don't regret any of it I just don't think people have to go through what I did to get there. Yeah. And, that, and that's, <laughs> that's definitely like, it, it's, a, it really is important. Cause you, like you just said, you had to go through X, Y, and Z to the point where you had a gun in your mouth, right. To, to have some type of shift, to have some type of realization or enlightening aha moment, just to realize shit. Like what am I, you know, who am I really? So that feeling, that shift, that catalyst is exactly what the mind analysis summary and action plan provides to people so that they don't have to get to the point where they're, they're trying to kill themselves or they don't have to get to the point where they're having an extremely toxic and abusive relationship that pushes them over the edge. Um, that analysis is basically going to help. Like if you were to have a mind analysis at that point before then, you could have avoided getting to that point because you would have had somebody to tell you, look, 
you have this at limiting belief, you have this core issue, you might be suffering from this, you, you probably are thinking this way and you have this desire because this happened when you were a little kid. You know, you perceive your parents this way, you perceive and identify yourself this way, your ego is like this, you have negative thoughts like this, you use negative languages, X, Y, and Z. It's, it's a whole bunch of analysis things that you can read all, you know, in the matter of a couple minutes that could potentially change your life forever. And that's exactly what I'm trying to provide and what I have provided to clients who are never the same after they get a mind analysis. And, that, and that's a powerful thing. It's, it's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting sub niche that you've created, but it's, but it's something that I don't think could have existed before now, to be quite frank. Yeah. Not because I don't think it was needed, but it, it's taken us until 2021 for hell. It took me until 2017 to, and I'm just going to call myself out on this to have enough fucking huevos to be able to look myself in the eye and figure out who I was. Mm. Right. And I was, fuck, I don't know. It's 2021 now. I'm 29. So, well, I turned 29 in July. So I was what, 24, 23 something like that, 25, somewhere in there. I don't want to math, it's late. But <laughs> somewhere in the mid-20s that I'd gone through my entire life not ready to have that conversation with myself, right? Yeah. And so I don't think it's something that could have existed before now. I think it's something that, quite frankly, I'm glad does exist. And I, I really do hope that you keep developing that and helping more people and making a larger impact. And that's why you're on the show, is to introduce a lot of people to that. Hopefully you get business out of it. If not, at least we've introduced a ton of people to the concept of, of mind mentorship and, and what a mind analysis is. Let, we've got to wrap up here, but before we do, uh, it, we're going to start the three favors, man. I, I just want you to leave the people with one, one impactful statement, one gold nugget, if you will. And then... If you've got a place where that resource is, your, your meditation, if you want them to email you, if there's a website they can go to, I think that can change a lot of lives. And then last but not least, man, where can people contact you? Mm. Okay. Um, yeah, the golden nugget thing hangs me up because it's funny. I, I have obsessive thinking and I have years of written content. Um, and I'll, almost all of my content is, is full of golden nuggets, but I'm trying to figure out a way to, to push it out there so people can actually read it. Um, Cause it started on notebooks and now it's on my, my computer. And now, you know, it's just sitting there, but I have a story that I could read. Does that count as a golden nugget? It's not really a statement. Um, as long as it's impactful. Um, yeah, I, I think it's impactful. I'll, I'll just read it to you. Um, so finding that secret spot, uh, all right, I ask, I ask a question, right? Is, do you know what it feels like to be comfortable within your suffering? So do you know what it actually feels like to be comfortable within your own suffering? If oh, you're yeah, not I did it for years, <laughs> but most people don't like their suffering if they perceive it to be suffering, right? So you perceive that suffering as a way that wasn't suffering to you. No, I just, I justified it, is it not suffering? I recognize that it was suffering, much like any drug addict or alcoholic recognizes their suffering. They just yeah. justify the action to it. Yeah. Well, so what, what I'm saying is if you're not familiar with that location, uh, are you trying to find it? And finding the secret spot is to get to the point where you realize and fundamentally feel that those who hurt you, such as your parents or your old relationships or strangers or even yourself, are just human beings. There are a series of enlightening discoveries and deeper understandings and various degrees of awareness one must experience in order to find a comfortable place within their own suffering. For example, understanding on a deeper level that people can't give you what they don't have. People can spend their entire lives finding these little E moments that you can kind of call breadcrumbs, leading them towards a path inward where that peace is found within their cave of suffering. 
Some, however, never stop to find those breadcrumbs and continue on an aimless path, always going further and further away from their own being, their own core, struggling through harsh weather in all different types of environments. So again, my mind analysis summary and action plan is not just a breadcrumb, but it's a whole loaf of bread. It's a collection of all the breadcrumbs that you would have had to find on your own on the path that you had no map for. It's the bread that is packaged for you and fresh, so you don't have to pick up breadcrumbs that have faced the wrath of the changing seasons. And instead of trucking along various rough and winding paths, meeting people and facing obstacles that distract you or point you in the wrong direction, you can use this loaf of bread and digest it at your own pace and use the energy you receive from it so you choose to continue on the path that you can now choose with more clarity. So that kind of like sums it up of what I think people really need to do. They're, they're on this path and they, they don't kind of pick up those breadcrumbs that are supposed to lead them inward back to their core, back to their fundamental origin. Um, and everything else is just distractions. So I think if I had to say a golden nugget is, is really find out what path you're on. Are you just kind of aimlessly wandering around and kind of bouncing to people, to person, to vision, to goal, to, to anything that comes your way and any thought that you think you should follow? And I think the most important path you should follow is the one that's leading you back inward to that core cave um, that is, is really the peace within your suffering because it's that peace that you'll find your authentic self just waiting for you to, to reintroduce himself to or herself to and, and have a conversation. Awesome. Now, resource. So what, 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 it doesn't have to be physical. It can be digital. Hell, it can be a statement. It can be a song, but let's give the people something to help them do exactly what you just said. Yeah, so you can, I mean, like you mentioned, you can reach out to me um, on my Facebook. I have, uh, you can Mind Mentor LLC. You can look up Alex Lewecki. I also have MindMentorLLC.com. I have that meditation guide that uh, I was talking about before that I, I can give for free, obviously. Um, I just haven't, I don't think I posted it up anywhere for someone to access and download, but I probably should put that as like a freebie now that I think of it. Um, but yeah, if you ever want any resources, I have hundreds of worksheets and custom worksheets too that can help you uh, facilitate introspection. In fact, I have a free course too on that website um, that does a lot of what I'm talking about for you. You just got to follow along and do everything in the course. Um, so that's free. So again, just you could just reach out to me on mindmentorllc.com, uh, look me up on Facebook, uh, and I'm on Instagram. I'm, I'm everywhere. Awesome. Well, Alex, thanks for, uh, th I mean, thanks for coming on. It's, it's been a good show. I mean, we're, we've been going what 47 minutes now. So it's been a, it's been a good time. I think you've dropped a lot of, a lot of good stuff for people listening here for, for all of you inbound secret listeners, make sure you go check out his mind mentor, LLC.com. I'd, I'd recommend just hopping in the course. I haven't seen it myself, but if it's anything like this conversation, it's going to be worth your time to check out. So mm -hmm. once again, thanks for being on, man. Everybody, this was another episode of The Inbound Secret. We'll see you next time. Thank you. This is The Inbound Secret. My name is Bryce, and I'm your host for The Inbound Secret, where we're talking with top performers and health experts and sales badasses alike about their strategies to optimize their well-being and performance. Once again, this is The Inbound Secret, and, and let's get rocking and rolling. This is The Inbound. This is, this is, this is The Inbound. This is The Inbound. This is The Inbound. This is The Inbound Secret.